Hello and welcome back to Dev Diary number 5, City Service of City Skylines 2. Today we are deeping dive into the new feature highlights video and then we'll go through all the details as we always do. So let's jump straight into it and not waste any more time. Successful city building in City Skylines 2 is all about people. I think this is like, although this is a an amazing starting scene and looks quite great with that sunset in there. I, I just love it. Uh, this person just waiting there and watching the sunset like this, pretty, pretty chill. But I want to call that out again, the, uh, the cuts in the terrain here without any keys. And that looks pretty good. That's such a neat cut in there. And I'm, I'm really keen to try some things out with these uh, with, with the zoning and the area. I don't know if those are just pathways or uh, pedestrian roads or what they actually are, but this looks really, really good. Anticipating their needs and desires, ensuring they feel safe and actually keeping them safe. Oh, sorry, hold on. Let's take a look at this. Look at these beautiful EMS or emergency services um, helicopter or I should say emergency medical services helicopter in there. Really, really cool. And again, this sunset looks oh, amazing. Like just awesome. Safe and actually keeping them safe. Understanding what annoys and delights them and doing what it takes to give them healthy, happy lives from beginning to end. How? City services. You'll build clinics. All right, I think we have to stop in here and understand what we have that's new in terms of information. So we are looking at healthcare. And again, we have the updates in there, all that sort of stuff. And we have the, um, healthcare and actually death care. This is not updated, by the way. These are unique buildings uh, that you can add to the city. I think one is the research center or something, medical research center or something like that. And the other one, I don't remember, it might be that huge medical center. Uh, but we do have information about healthcare. So how many people is actually sick or injured and the capacity, average health in your city, number of patients, the crematorium availability. Um, that, what I like about this is that you don't have those tabs anymore to filter through healthcare and death care. Elementary school, high school, university, it's all together and you can see all at a glance. This is like, it's a, a huge improvement in terms of UI. I, I really like that. That'll make things a lot easier to just at a glance understand if you need to do something or not. And you can see here, number of deaths per month and the handling capacity per month as well. We have cemeteries. It's also in the same uh, in the same view in there. We have 7,000 occupied at the moment with capacity of 21,066% uh, used in there. I hope that actually this should be free. Cemetery availability, yeah, 66% available. Yeah, there we go. And then we have the overlays that we are starting to get more and more familiar with. So we have some overlays for the buildings. Healthcare is this color. Death care is a purple. Ambulance on the road, they are green. Horses are blue. And then you have the overlay on the building color for citizens' health. Basically, these colors in here. You can see that this is not a very light uh, green. So that means that they're not as healthy as people on this building here, for example. And then you have the network color, which are the roads and the coverage for healthcare in the area. That's really cool, and I really like it. And hospitals to deliver healthcare, plus the ambulance service people need in life or death situations. Oh yeah, sometimes it will- Oh, look at this hearse. This looks amazing. Like it's, it, this vehicle like looks way, way better than what we had in the first city skylines. Like it's, a lot more realistic and I think it 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 fits quite well. I, I love it. Be a death situation. So you'll add death care service. All right, we are now in the death care tab. This I believe could be a crematorium. I'm not completely sure. 
but we do have the cemeteries in here as well. I think, yeah, definitely crematorium, which is up here, and cemetery is over here. Services that transport people to the city's crematoriums and cemeteries. Oh, look at the cemetery. This looks beautiful. Look at how many trees they have in there now. Oh, this looks so, so good. And I love that they went a little bit away from religion as well. No problems with anyone that has a religion, but I think we have it together for all types of publics in here. And I think this vibe, it's a lot more accurate for nowadays. Like it's a mod lot more modern and it, it, it looks beautiful. Yeah, I really like it. They'll set up schools for kids of all ages. Plus Look at school. Universities. Hold on, hold on. Those buildings are amazing as well. So this is the elementary school. And although I'm quite, I'm quite not sure what this is over here, it looks pretty cool. I think we have another view from this building later on. Uh, this is the high school. And we can also see, I don't know if it's just a, like a park um, or a stadium or varsity, uh, as they, they call in six clients one. But this looks pretty cool in there. And we have the high school building in here, which looks fantastic. And we have a little university in here as well. And a green, a green. <laughs> and again, lots of green uh, uh, areas in here with bushes, fences, decoration, trees, all that sort of stuff. Looks really, really good. Universities, after all, education fosters social advancement. Here we go. We, as I mentioned, we don't have those tabs anymore. So that is very, very good. And I'm kicking things like here in, the, in my desk. Just so excited about all of this. So you can see elementary school, we need more in the city. High school, we have enough. College, same. University, that isn't enough. But we also have information about education distribution. Uh, we have an educated, poorly educated, educated, well-educated, and highly educated. So this is the, the separation in there between the education steps that people will take through. I think it's worth mentioning at this point that if someone goes to the school, and I think we saw in a previous building uh, or previous uh, image that they took like six months to graduate, so that is a risk that they don't graduate. If that happens, they will reevaluate based on their age and the expectation of income, and they'll make a decision individually. Each thing will make a decision if they try again or if they keep getting educated. Even if they graduate, uh, let's say they finished elementary school and they need to go to, to, go to high school, that is a decision point and they might not go in there. They finish high school and that is a decision point and they might not go to university or they might go to there. If you don't have enough education in your city, they'll look for education in nearby cities. And that means that, or they will travel, but what will most likely happen is they will just move out of your city. So this is a nice technique if you want to get more people coming to your city, you might uh, improve your education and people actually travel to your city to use your education facilities and they will start uh, moving into a city and living there. And then they might like have a family and then they will stay until they get old. But I love these decision patterns because then you don't have just a flow where at some point you just have everyone highly educated you have so these drop-off points that people see if it's worth for their lives, if they want to get better education, or if they just want a, a job at that, at that level that they are already. And this makes a lot of sense. This is a lot more realistic. And I think, oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> but then we have the schools overlay in here, research facilities, and citizen education on the color of the buildings, and also the education coverage is basically coverage on the streets. That is another very good point that we have to make in here. Before, in City Skylines 1, what you had to do is basically, uh, this is not enough, just add another building, right? 
and you create a new suburb, you just put one building of each service and then you, you are all sorted. On service clients too, you don't actually need to do that and you shouldn't need to do this. Um, these All these buildings very close together is potentially the reason why the, the cost here that, that we are seeing is very deep. You don't need as many services that close by. Even the, if the roads are kind of red, your citizens will actually travel a, a little bit to get to those places. Obviously, the better they will feel and they probably attract more people to your city as well. But the point is, this will cost you a lot of money and you might not have that. So these areas where you, you see the red uh, network in here with low coverage or bad coverage, you can still see that education is quite high in those areas. So this shows you that although coverage is not great, you might have like public transportation or ways for people to get in those areas and they'll be more than happy to do so. Life still might take a turn for the worse for some people. When it does, you'll want the safety net of a welfare office. This is something new, a uh, welfare office. So you'll notice that there is a lot of uh, talk about your citizens well-being. So what it's like the core that changed the game in here is that you add parks, you add services, and this doesn't affect directly the land value. This will actually affect the well-being of your citizens. And depending on their well-being, the land value will increase or decrease. So that's where the welfare office comes into play. If your citizens have 50% or lower uh, well wellness, uh, I think that's that's what they call. I don't remember exactly the name that they're using, but if they have 50% or lower, they will seek for a welfare office. The welfare office will help them increase that, uh, that wellness or that well-being of the, your citizens. And with that, they, they will get a little bit better. But it's also worth noting that you will still need to look at the core of the issue because this could be not enough to help your citizens uh, recover and keep them uh, healthy and safe. One thing that improves everyone's well-being, Ooh, great view. what's going on in life, is time outdoors. You'll create... Oh, look at this dog park. That's so cute. <laughs> I love it. But I'm just missing the dogs <laughs> at the moment. Create <laughs> parks, plazas, attractions, and landmarks that make people living near... Hold on, that is one extra thing here that we can see. So these types of parks, I, I don't know if they are parks or plazas, we have just three in here. But then you have this option, you have this option, you have what I think it's sports venue, or what's the difference between those two, I'm not completely sure. You have maybe tourism options for leisure, and I would say these are unique buildings like the Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, and the Arc of Triumph, which is probably what is showing in here. That's really good. We also have park maintenance, parks and attractions, park maintenance vehicles, and leisure activities with also the park coverage network in here, showing up in the, in the network. Plazas, attractions, and landmarks that make people living nearby happier and healthier. As in real life, Safety first is a good mantra in city skylines too. Look at this fire. That's pretty cool. But now it's interesting that the building isn't on fire. It's just the, the trees at the front there. But then where are you going? I think we missed where the fire was. <laughs> so you'll want various fire and rescue. Oh, that's more. Just adding a firehouse reduces the likelihood of a blaze. All right. More overlays here for us to take a look at and have a a quick peek at what's happening. So we have average fire hazard, and as just mentioned in the video, adding a fireplace or not fireplace, <laughs> a fire station or fire service and reduce the fire hazard around the city. So that is really good. And I think this is, uh, it has a, an area of effects there that we can see on this overlay. 
you have fire rescue buildings, fire watch towers that's in there, that's especially useful for your forest fires and also it's when you can send helicopters but you need a helicopter depot for that to work so keep that in mind and fire watch tower range as well in the neighborhood same with police stations all right for the police as we all right now we have um police and prison or jail so you basically have uh, your jail availability so and the number of criminals in jail in there as well and for prison availability i think those are the ones inside the police station um and you have the number of sentenced people and the capacity in there average crime probability which is uh, again a new mechanic in here you now have the number of criminals and the number of crimes per month and also the success rate. Now, how does all work? There's a crime, let's say, in this building on the screen, and depending on the distance of the police station, it takes, like, as soon as the crime happens, it triggers an alarm, and then it goes to the police station, and then the police station takes um, a couple of minutes and dispatch a new car. This car needs to get in here. If they get in here before the criminal leaves the scene, they are caught and they go to jail. If they leave before, it's a crime success and they escape prison. And that's basically how that works. Now, in terms of overlays, we do have almost the same thing, but police buildings, prisons, police cars, prison vans, crime probability in an area and the police coverage in the network or the roads in there. I can see a lot of people have, including myself, having problems with <laughs> criminality in the city now. But at least you have enough information to make informed decisions where you need to increase a police station, for example, and or uh, add an extension or add a new one uh, or add a new jail or things like that. I think another thing that is very important in how it actually works you have the area of effect, so that helps with the crime probability around the place, and you have the coverage, so or the area where your cars are patrolling is usually a lot larger than the area of effect of the building, and that helps as well quite a lot. So you, you do have those two effects going on, and if you work with them quite well, you have like a very large coverage around your city with just one building. Build them and send patrols out onto the streets to cut crime. Communications is a new city service. All right, now we get to a new service, which is telecom. And I already like it. <laughs> so basically telecom will provide people with internet coverage and having internet makes areas more attractive and also help business businesses because people will be able, for example, to shopping over the internet and that will increase profitability from buildings because they don't actually just sell for people visiting the actual shop. And that is a big, big game changer for the game. And this on, the, on here on this overlay, you have your telecom facilities which I can't see anyone right here in this area. And that's probably why the coverage is very low as well. But you have the network quality, which is the building color. As you can see, this area is greener, so it's better. And the further you go, the network quality is worse. And you have the coverage as well, which is actually the terrain color and not the building, so you can see the terrain in here you have like it's still yellow in here so it kind of follows the same as the quality and it makes sense the further away from an antenna for example uh the the worse it gets in city skylines too helping you meet more essential needs that includes the internet naturally well, there we go we these are some of the buildings that we have we have those two antennas we have these uh, it's a data center or some server center or something like that. And you have this huge antenna that I believe will provide like a 
an awesome uh, coverage for your city, but it should be seen. It still should be seen. The easier it is to connect to the web, the happier everyone will feel and the more profitable the city And looks is. good. Of course, everyone relies on electricity, so you want to avoid long outages. They aren't just aggravating. Blackouts will prompt people to move out. And, and I don't know if you saw that, but that is a blackout happening in here. You start seeing all the lights going off and it's, a, it's quite cool, actually. You want to avoid long outages. They aren't just aggravating. Blackouts will prompt people to move out and force businesses to pause production. Something nice to, to note in here. I think, first of all, all the options. You also have these transformers that help with the, the load. But there are a few things that come to attention and that I think would be really nice to work with. But let's go through this area and you'll see what I'm saying. First how much electricity is available in your city. That's normal. The more power stations you add, the more you have. Electricity trade, how much you are importing or exporting. In this case, we are exporting and obviously making money. Uh, that is also um, an auto balance. You don't actually select how much you export. Any excess will be exported. And if you increase the usage, you export more. That, that's how that works. You have battery charge, which is really good. So in cases where you're using, let's say, solar uh, power or wind turbines uh, and it's night or there is no wind, then we rely on the batteries. And so then you can still consume electricity. In terms of overlays, we do have power plants. And this is some of the things that I think would be quite cool. We have transformers. And we have batteries, so we can add transformers and batteries. Uh, this has the electricity consumption from low to high, depending on the building as well. And we have a split now from low voltage electric cables and high voltage power lines. And this is where I think this will get interesting because you do see in here that we have electricity flow and bottlenecks. So that means that we may need to add other power lines or other uh, transformers along the way to help with the load balance of energy in the city. And this is really, really interesting. The same happens for the high voltage power lines as well. It's, it's an interesting mechanic and I really want to see that uh, and how that plays out in the game. And we have wind speed interaction. Obviously, we use that for um, for the, the wind turbine. I don't know the groundwater deposits in here. Maybe it's for the geothermal uh, um, power station. Might be. I'm not so sure. And that is surface water flow. Now, I believe that one is for the, the dam that we have in here as well. Putting profits at risk electricity lines humming with sustainable energy sources like wind you see the flickering of lights in here when the power is coming back this is exactly what happens in real life that's so cool sustainable energy sources like wind solar geothermal and hydropower go old school with fossil fuels like holding oh this is a nice upgrade there look at this this is without the upgrade for the coal power plants and this is the upgrade right there these so you have three types of upgrades and i'll cover all of them uh later on but you basically have ones that would change how the building looks and you have the ones that won't change how the building looks and you have the third one that actually adds an extra building so one it's in the area that you already have like this uh what we've seen here as you can see it's exactly the same area it's just like changing how it looks adding one more um, turbine in there. And uh, the other one is, uh, you, you can see, it's just like adding a filter to the output in here. And the third one is adding extra buildings. And then you need more land around the area as well. And that's, this looks really, really cool. Love it. Like coal and gas, there's always the nuclear option too. This is one of my complaints from before. So the smoke going through the, the building there. Uh, I think this needs to be slightly adjusted, but yeah, this the nuclear power plants, power plants 
uh, things to give like a, a huge output that can almost cover your whole city. So I'm really keen to see to see what happens there. This is the most realistic city builder ever. Oh, look at this pollution. Look how bad that looks. <laughs> And I think that's why she's saying that's the most realistic city builder ever. Yeah, I know it. So you'll need to deal with a whole lot of sh stuff. We're talking <laughs> sewage. Gross? Right. Yes. Necessary? Also yes. With a wastewater treatment plant, you can purify sewage. All right, lots of things in here. You can see the water flow. You can see the... Uh, the sewage water in here, as you can see, that's the overlay that we can see. So if the water is flowing that way, uh, the sewage is accumulating a down river over there. And this is water availability, pretty bad in the city. So that means that we are not leaving people without water. We are actually just spending money and importing water from the other cities. So we just like spending money in there. Sewage treatment is the same thing you can process and produce, but you can only do this if our city reaches the, uh, the, the side tiles of the map, so you can create those connections. But yeah, this will be also covered later on. And sewage export in here, there's nothing at the moment. And in terms of overlays, we have freshwater facilities, which is what we're seeing. We have sewage facilities, water consumption as well. Water pipes, fresh water, and polluted water, so you can actually see from the pipes in here if you have polluted water and it's making citizens sick. Uh, you have sewage pipes and sewage water as well, groundwater deposits and groundwater pollution. So that is, again, a lot of information there for you to make very informed decisions. And it's good to see that you have individual pipes in there, just water, just sewage, and both together and circulate water into your city's freshwater network or you can pump sewage into open waters and out of the network so you do have both options for inland treatment and for the uh, river um, um, uh, water stuff <laughs> in there, the outlets that's the name i'm looking for so you still have those two options in the big in the base game that that's fantastic now we are moving on to garbage uh, and I'll call this out right now because I'll stop there again and I'll talk about this but now when you add a landfill you have to define the area of the landfill and that will fill up so that's fantastic because that's how it should work it's not just a small building that's just like there's a pile of stuff in there and then that goes away there's a pile of stuff in there and that goes away there's nothing like that anymore and as you can see, we have garbage processing status in there. You have landfill availability. So the more processing status, the clearer the landfill, I believe, will, will get. Uh, and you have the recycling facilities as well. Recycling facilities will uh, use the recycled materials to produce goods for commercial. And you can also see the garbage accumulation as well in the buildings, in the area, so you can, again, make more informed decisions. Don't forget to stay on top of garbage. Just adding that area for the, for the landfill in there. It comes with a small little area at the back in there, but obviously you should do this. And I think that area is the limit, really. So you follow this uh, curved line to define your actual area garbage processing centers, landfills, and an incineration plant will stop it piling up. But don't take shortcuts. Air and water pollution can sink land values, harm the health of residents. All right, we are talking about uh, air and water pollution, and these are both the overlays for air. So you have your average air pollution, and obviously you have to be careful with uh, industry. You can see that the wind is blowing that way, and I don't know if you can see back here, you have some arrows pointing that way as well. If it was pointing this way, this area would get uh, like a lot sicker. Uh, everyone will get sick. Everyone will need more and more um, health treatment. And this would be a nightmare. So this is something that you have to pay a lot of attention. And you have like air pollution, 
uh, what are the sources of that pollution, traffic air pollution in the direction as well. And next we have the water pollution, which is similar, uh, the same idea as we've seen before, the, the water is going that way. So we see, although the arrows, they seem like quite random pointing in, at least at this time in here, doesn't feel like water is going that way and then this way and then to the middle and then to the other side. It's just weird, but uh, we know that the water is going that way because that's where it's accumulating more and more um, sewage in there or uh, polluted water. And you can see ground pollution uh, in here. This one is actually surface water flow, I should say. Now, I don't really know what is the surface water flow, but yeah, I, I'm not so sure how that's used, but it's there. So we, we know we have groundwater deposits. I can see some here, there, more back there as well. Maybe that's what it is in here. Could be, yeah. And water pollution and deposits, groundwater pollution, water pollution source, and ground pollution source. So if something is polluting the water, you can see that those buildings, they are a ground pollution source. And the water pollution source, I think they, yeah, the yellow ones will be the ones responsible for that and these ones as well. So keep an eye on that and make your city healthier for everyone. Land values harm the health of residents and tarnish the city's appeal to... And I love to see that you can actually mouse over the bubbles and see what they mean. So that is not, not those questions anymore. Oh, what that sign actually means. And this is our pollution. So surrounding air pollution is negatively affecting the building's occupants. And this one is accumulated garbage. That one I know. Tourists. Ready to introduce a city service? Previously, you only had to construct a city service building. So this is the elementary school and we are seeing here that we have a limit of students. So this will touch again a little bit on what I've mentioned before about adding an extension and uh, or um, just a change or a new building. And I won't interrupt this as much, but I just want you to see uh, all, all the items in here, like the upkeep, the efficiency, employees, and the average time to graduation that we mentioned before and the dropout rate as well. And this is like, just please look at these buildings. They look really, really cool. Service needed to cover a larger area or... I think, yeah, sorry, but that's worth stopping in here to know that graduation times also depends on the building efficiency, student well-being, the school type, and some city-wide effects. So it's not that it will always be six months depends on a lot of different factors and they'll all be combined to come up with the, that number. So that is uh, really nice to see. Dropout rates are dependent on the same factors. Uh, in addition, students may decide to quit if the school is too far away, their graduation chance is low, or if they are too old, or if they can earn more money without a degree over their lifetime. So those are all the factors that they are considering there and uh, for, for them to drop out. So really, really interesting and will definitely change the landscape of the city. Support more people, you simply constructed the same building again. Not anymore. Almost all city services can now be upgraded to scale operations and expand functionality. While city services make your city livable, they come at a cost. Balancing these costs and the very real needs of everyone in your city is the name of the game. All right. Then. Just go one frame back because this is uh, very, very interesting as well. So you do have all your services in here and you have roads, electricity, water, sewage, healthcare, garbage, education, fire rescue, police, transportation, parks, communication, and landscaping. And you can, as on Series Clients 1, you can change the, the budget in the air, but this has... Um, I would say a bigger impact on your city just because of the way these buildings work. And uh, as you can see, the service budget affects service building efficiency and efficiency for education and research affects the graduation chance of students. 
So it's not just adding more capacity, it also increase the graduation chance of the students. And in improving the service buildings, it might have an effect on the time for graduation as well. So it all, it's all connected. It's all uh, parts of like a, a living organism, which usually cities are, by the way. And we, we know that, right? I also think that we have the Large Hadron Collider in there. Wow. <laughs> love it. I, I love it. And you get the fees from the school in this case. And this is how much you were spending uh, on, on those buildings. So worth keeping an eye on that. Worth seeing how the efficiency uh, is in here and how that all works. And adjusting that to make sure that your city is working as well as possible. Also, this looks like snow in here. Um, and so you're probably coming out of winter or getting into winter in there. Pretty cool. Now, just a recap, I think we can talk about every single service type that we have. We do have road, and uh, road is a service type because they are how people get around the city and provide basic infrastructure like water and electricity. We do have electricity, we have water and sewage, uh, which we then have inside of that, this topic. You have surface water, you have groundwater and sewage. Uh, you have healthcare and death care. We have garbage management, education and research. We have fire and rescue. And inside there, we have the fire towers as well. We have police and administration. And by administration, I mean the welfare office, uh, city hall and central bank. I think we haven't seen that in the individual. In so the city hall has a city-wide effect and it, it, it ranges from lower low on interest rates and import costs to reduce crime rates and building leveling costs. So there's quite a lot of citywide effects for the city hall. The central bank helped reducing loans and boost companies' profits by lowering uh, import costs and increasing export profits. So I think these are buildings that will uh, help your city overall and improve your income as well. Then we have obviously transportation, which we covered before. We have parks and recreation. And just remember, putting down a park doesn't help your land value straight away. It will actually help with citizens uh, well... Um, why do I struggle with these words? Citizens' well-being? <laughs> and then uh, that might affect the land value. So it's not a direct effect and it takes a little bit of time to, for that change to happen. But parks also provide more uh, leisure for them, so that fulfill their needs and attractiveness for uh, tourism or tourists coming to your city. And then we have the new service uh, that in the category of communications, we still have post services. We haven't seen that, but we do have post service. The only uh, thing worth mentioning about the, this post servicing is that if you don't have a post sorting facility, you can just import and export mail. But if you do have a post sorting facility, people can send mail inside the city. So I think that's an important thing in there for uh, improving, again, well-being of your citizens. And obviously, we have the telecommunications, which is a new system that we actually provide um, internet for the citizens. And you have the network coverage and the quality of services, uh, services as well. Landscaping is considered a service for the city as well, and landscaping is basically the terraforming tool. They work very, very similarly as uh, City Skylines 1. The thing that I don't know about is that if you have any limitation for soil, for example, if you are making a mountain, uh, do you have to take soil from somewhere else? or buy it from somewhere else, or if you can just do it. I, I, that's not very clear yet. And I think we have to get our hands on the game to understand a little bit more. One big difference in the landscaping, though, is that you plant three saplings and they will grow into mature trees. So 
I don't know if I have the option to, man to plant mature trees or if you have to wait for them to grow every time, but it, this is the way it works. Uh, the same thing happens if like they get on fire and there's a forest fire, forest fire and it destroys a part of the forest, you have to wait for the trees to grow again in their place. So that is an interesting mechanic in there and it's good to see that they have a life cycle, that's pretty cool. Uh, you have pathways, which is another feature in the landscaping, which is basically pedestrian pathways uh, to help them find better uh, ways to go here and there and not use their own vehicles or even not using public transportation, they can walk. So this is uh, always a good thing to add to your cities. We also mentioned the service upgrades and the three options that we have in there as well. So the names of the three upgrade, upgrade types are operational, which change the statistics of the building uh, without changing the looks. Then you have the extension, which are visible upgrades connect to the main building that usually increase the building capacity for vehicles, range, output, uh, or number of systems being serviced. But it's just in that same uh, building lot, initial building lot that you had. And then you have the subbuildings, which are separate buildings attached to the main building, and they can increase things like, for example, fuel storage capacity of power plants or add new functionality to a building, uh, like the children's clinic and play playground upgrades for the elementary school. So just keep in mind that this requires extra space. So if you want these added, uh, leave the space around your buildings for the upgrades. Now, you don't need to add upgrades or all the upgrades to all buildings. Again, it's very important to pay attention to the needs of your citizens, especially in the area around those service buildings. So not all buildings will have all the upgrades and they are very, very expensive as well, which again makes uh, more sense to not have them more often than not. So your more, uh, I think often your choices will be, do I add a new building? For example, elementary school, do I add a new elementary school or do I expand the building? Do I do, I do an upgrade that add more capacity in this area? What's cheaper? What will service my city better? better? Do I have more people uh, in need of education in this area where I already have a school? So that makes sense to upgrade. It is somewhere else, so that makes sense to build a new school. So that's, those are the things that you, you have to think from now on. Now, I highly recommend, as always, to read the full dev diary because this, they also cover things like the passive service coverage effect for service buildings. Uh, what that is, is basically for, for example, healthcare facilities is the health bonus in the uh, service area and our education is the well-being for family, uh, fire department, decreased fire hazard, and so on. So I think it's good for you to take a look at that and see how that works. Now, we keep saying ser service efficiency and how to improve that, but what that actually is, I think it's something that we need to uh, take a look and talk about that. So for roads, is basically the number of available road maintenance vehicles. For electricity is the electricity output level. Water is sewage is the water output level and sewage processing speed. Health and death care is the treatment bonus, processing speed of the disease, and number of available ambulances and hearse. So when you move that slider, this is what that slider is affecting. Uh, for garbage management is the processing speed plus the number of available garbage trucks. Education research is the graduation bonus. Fire and rescue, the number of available fire engines, which is the same for police administrations, the number of available police cars. Transportation is the number of available transportation vehicles. Parks and recreations is the attractiveness value and the number of available park maintenance vehicles. And communication, number of available post vehicles uh, or post office or uh, mail and network range and capacity. That's also how they calculate uh, the efficiency in the dev diary and I'll leave that for you to take a look at there. Or if you have questions, just ask me in the comments, please. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, every service has a fee and this is your income 
when we look at the service uh, app or service uh, information in the in the game menu. So, for example, electricity and water fees are paid by citizens and companies because they are using both electricity and water. And you can see that in the economy panel. Lowering fee increases citizen happiness, as always, and company profitability, but also increase the usage of water and electricity. So keep that in mind. I think those uh, things are mainly uh, the most important ones to, to keep in mind when messing around with the service fees. Now, citizens will also pay a fee for healthcare, for, for garbage, for education. For healthcare is when they visit the facilities. For garbage is when the, the garbage is collected. And education, uh, it's when they go to school. So the same thing goes for uh, road, roadside parking fees and transportation uh, ticket fees as well. For trading with other cities, worth mentioning that you can trade electricity, water, and sewage. Both can be imported and exported. And I think we already uh, touched on the mechanics on how that works. Now, if your city doesn't have um, medical facilities, citizens might travel to outside connections or to another city to get treatment, and then they come back. Other cities may send ambulance to your city to pick them up, but just keep in mind that because of the distance that might be too far away and they might die. So this is something to, to keep in mind as well. Same goes for police and fire services uh, and the same consideration as well. If the police is in another city, it's very likely that if a crime is committed, they won't get the, the criminal and the criminal will escape. So keep that in mind. Now, we've haven't seen in the dev diary uh, video the district tool, but they do have that in the dev diary and you can take a look at how that actually works. But it's an easier way than on Cities Crimes 1. You basically, it's the same way that you do the area for the landfill, for example, or from the previous um, dev diary, the area for your industry. You basically add the lines and you can change the area and add more nodes to make it the way you like it. So you have a lot more control and it's a little bit easier to create those areas as well. And you do have uh, your policies, district policies and the city policies on both. Now, I won't cover all the district policies and city policies, but for city policies, what do we have at the moment? We have advanced pollution management, city promotion, high-speed highways, which basically is no speed limit on highway, and pre-release programs for uh, education program for jail, and the minimum fare for taxi. So you enforce a minimum fare around your city. On the base game, we do have seven different district policies and five city policies, and the city policies are the ones that I mentioned. And that will be all for today. I think we covered everything. This is one of the biggest dev diaries so far, and there was a lot to cover in here. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if I have any questions. I'm more than happy to reply to all your comments. Also consider joining our Discord server. The link is in the description, and we have a nice community in there that we exchange ideas, we ask questions, we sometimes show our cities, and we talk about mods and uh, cities clients too, and some other things as well. Other than that, you can also follow me on Twitter, for example. And finally, I just want to say a big thank you for all your likes, uh, for the Patreons, for everyone that watch, comments, suggests, ask questions, and everything in between. So thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.